Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows and our adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of Gotham. A great season premiere. We're jumping right into it. I like what they did at the end. They started at the end, and then they went to the beginning. It's like 390, was it seven days or something like that? It was like, it was over a year in the future, and then it cuts back to about 87, so about like three months into the future, essentially, since season three's finale. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so just kind of work our way up to where we were at the beginning of the episode, essentially. So I guess almost work backwards in a sense. But uh, where things are now, obviously Gotham is split up in different territories. The government continues to not to get involved. Because, I mean, you know, Gotham's already kind of, like, the problem that it's always been, but I think it's even more so of a lost cause now because it's, like, I think the reason why the government just won't do anything about it is because mainly because it's probably a situation of there's probably one solution under mine, but it's, like, if they do that, there'll be a big hubbub and situation. So that's why they're just leaving, leaving Gotham on its own because it's such a volatile situation not unless there's someone on it outside in particular who's trying to make sure that Gotham stays the way it is I wouldn't I wouldn't know why but at the very least I'd have to say like I say it's just probably just it's more trouble than it's worth to even bother with Gotham at this point that's what I'm assuming you have Firefly and Freeze and kind of fighting over territory you got a few gangs popping up uh Penguin running his situation so are the Sirens the cops are trying to help out whoever remains. Bruce is there. So is Selena, because Selena and Alfred weren't able to get out in time before the bridges blew. And so uh, Selena got surgery because her spine was messed up, which I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Like, I guess they're pushing her towards, like, the Oracle route. That was kind of interesting. Well, I mean, I don't know, like, because anytime someone, like, gets paralyzed in a DC universe, you're like, oh, like, that's the go-to. It's like, oh, they got Barbara Gordon. You know, which is which is interesting because it's just like, well, because we do have actual Jim Gordon and it's just kind of like it's just it's just kind of interesting. But um, I say all that because, you know, the same thing happened to Felicity back in season four of Arrow. So it's just that's why it just kind of pops in my head. I've never referred to it as being uh, Barbara Gordon before until now, which makes it seem even more morbid and messed up to put it like that. I kind of apologize for even phrasing it like that. It's kind of sad and it's. You feel bad because, like, obviously Bruce is sticking by her. He's like, I'm going to be here for her. And for her, she kind of blames him a little bit because it's like, even now all the stuff that she's done in her life, what ultimately did her, it wasn't all the stuff she did, all the stealing any people she's hurt. It was Bruce. Being his friend cost her because it's like, Jeremiah did that to get to you. And I, I had to pay the price for it. And it's like, Bruce already feels already responsible for her saying, I'm sure just reaffirms what he's already feeling just because that's how Bruce is. But, um... Uh, yeah, what's interesting, though, is because I feel like, even compared to last season, I feel like Bruce has really stepped up even more, especially with his relationship with the cops and stuff like that. Um, he ended up bringing in that uh, supply copter and everything. Um, he's helping the GCPD in whatever way he can, getting Lucia, Lucius to uh, steal uh, some stuff from uh, Wayne Dagg, you know, like uh, night vision goggles that kind of help him in any shape or form. Him and... In particular, Jim trying to hold on to whatever hope that they can. It's like, I love Bruce walking up being like, you know you don't have to be the one to kind of turn on, you know, uh, the simple, the light. And he's like, oh, I, I, I want to be the one to do it. So I'm like, ah! Uh, there was that sick moment, though, um, when Scarecrow and his people came in. And that whole situation of Bruce taking them out like that one by one, kind of like with night vision goggles. I'm like, yo, doing your Batman thing of like, Taking someone down, disappearing. I love that. It was almost smooth until like the lights came on and he's got the night vision goggles on and it kind of screwed everything up. But it's kind of it's kind of crazy because this is kind of referred to as no man's land and like I said, the criminals are just kind of running rampant and there's just not enough protection for anybody. Uh, Penguin is kind of eating like a fat cat while the people he has working on ammunition and stuff like that are starving. And he's like, oh, I, I don't have anything to give, even though he literally gives food to his dog, Ed, because that food he got was overcooked. So kind of shows you where his mindset is. Barbara's making deals with him for ammunition, but Tabitha's like, no, after what he did to Butch, we need to kill him. And when Tabitha got the moment, I was like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, something's going to happen. Is she going to change her mind? I was like, no, when she had the opportunity, she pulled the trigger. Just luckily for him, he's been overworking his workers, and so... 
well, under feeding them, and because of that, they've been suffering a little bit, and because of that, the bullets are not great quality because some of them misfire. She just happens to have the one bullet that misfires. I mean, there were many, but she just happens to have one that misfires as well, so, which ended up being her undoing as she got stabbed. I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. You just killed her off immediately, which, to be fair, this ain't the first time I've seen a show recently kill off a main character, like, right at the beginning of a new season, but it's like, wow, that's definitely interesting. I didn't expect that, but, um, Makes you wonder, is that the end? I mean, like, not a lot of people stay... Well, Butch is dead, dead. But still, you kind of... Like, not everyone stays dead in Gotham for long. Because there's a whole situation with Ed. Because something that's interesting about that, we've yet to see Strange or Lee. But Ed seems like he's losing it. Well, it's Riddler. But he feels like he's losing his mind because he's, he's blacking out and he's losing time. And every time he wakes up, he's in a location. He doesn't remember how he got there. So, and he's thinking it's Ed that's doing it. Now, me, personally, I'm like, the fact is we haven't seen Lee in any shape or form because the last time we saw, they were both getting surgery together. Part of me wonders, did Strange do something where he couldn't preserve, like, maybe, like, somehow he implanted part of Lee in of him? So it's like, it's not just Riddler or Ed, or maybe it's not even Ed anymore. Maybe there's Riddler and then there's Lee in his head. Maybe that's what it is. Because at no point is Ed, um, Ed talking, but he has taken him to these specific spots and he tries to track down. Like, he hasn't really figured it out because it's like, what is this all about, you know? So we're still kind of in the dark about that situation. But I'm feeling like it ha like there's only one cause. It ha I mean, to be fair, he's always had issues with kind of like the whole multiple personality thing. But um, his psychology is kind of like... Well, his psyche, more specifically, is like all over the place. Kind of always has been over the course of the series. But I feel like this is an even bigger change. So I'm curious, like, what's going on in that regard. Um, they end up bringing up the whole Selena thing about, like, how, like, a, a nurse or whatever is kind of like, oh, you want to help her? You got to find the witch. I'm assuming the only witch I can think of in Gotham, especially where everything stands, I'm assuming it's Ivy. She's the closest thing, I think, to a witch I could be wrong about that. I'm sure, she, I mean, even though her and Selena have had their issues, I think she'd be willing to help, but it's like, at what cost would that, I mean, what would that do to Selena? Like, I mean, I'm sure nothing like that doesn't come without a price, you know? I love that Penguin ended up getting shot in his leg, and he's complaining about it. He's like, I literally just fixed my leg, and I got shot. In particular, Jim's the one that shot him, so. I also thought it was kind of interesting, because Harvey was like, the fact that the matter is we're living in a lawless land, and you still won't put him down. Because I guess for, like, you know, it's, it's that situation of desperate times show us who we really are. And for Jim, it's like, I guess because for him also, he's going down that path too much that even if it was under these circumstances, if he goes down that path, there might not be any coming back from it. And it's just like, just because they've given up hope and become the monsters that they have doesn't mean I have to be. We have to be better no matter what the circumstances are, because if we're not here to protect this city and protect people, no one else is going to fight for them. So that's kind of, you know, we got to keep hope alive. You know, that's why we stayed behind in the first place. I even love because, you know, Bruce snuck along and ended up helping because he ended up giving the ammunition when they needed. But I thought it was kind of interesting because he was like, Bruce, you know, if you want to, all you have to do is ask and you you've easily earned your place here. So I was like, oh, that's so kind of interesting because it's, you know, obviously the whole Batman situation, Batman kind of works alongside the GCPD, obviously, but he always kind of keeps his distance. So it's kind of interesting that Jim is offering him a place to like, no, you've done your fair share of helping. You brought in a helicopter and stuff like that, got shot down. I'm assuming that was Jeremiah, but maybe that was someone else. Because it almost seems like there's something else too because there's that kid that shows up later on that's like, oh, something or someone is killing them or whatever so i don't because he's been quiet for the past three months but then echo had snuck into the gcpd and she was looking at map and she drew on the ha 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 and the eyes on it so it's kind of like why now like out of any time why now and how did you know well he did work for uh wayne enterprises so now I, it makes sense he'd probably know that that was Maybe he has eyes and ears on everything that Bruce or Lucius does. So, but maybe he knew, because he knew to, to expect it, because he knew it was something that was, you know, in the Wayne Enterprise wheelhouse, you know? So, maybe, I don't know. 
there's also the aspect of like Gordon having an ally on the outside who hasn't completely given up on Gotham, even though a lot of people on the outside have. Who she is in particular, I don't know. It'd be, I, we're not going to go there, but it'd be interesting if we get like a, oh, who are you? I'm a, Amanda Waller. I'm, what? Like that. I don't know if we get that or not. That'd be kind of interesting because that'd be very foreshadowed. If it did that too, it'd also be interesting just because like in Telltale's Batman uh, Season 2, uh, The Enemy Within, uh, Amanda Waller shows up in that. So it'd just be kind of interesting like how that all would play out like that in my mind. But maybe it's someone else entirely different. Maybe this is before she gets to become the powerhouse that she does later on, you know, Argus or the agency, whatever continuity you want to go by. I'm pretty sure Argus is only in the Arrowverse that she ran things. The real sad thing, too, about this whole situation also is, like, the fact that Selena was willing to kill herself just because, it's like, she might be paralyzed. And, you know, it's just, like, it, what's for her, especially because it's, like, what's left to live for when you're under these circumstances of just, like, the city being what it is and there's no escape, you know, probably probably feels powerless. But that's all interesting because obviously, like I said, kind of circling back to like what we saw at like, you know, months from now at we saw at the beginning was like Jim, Harvey, as well as Riddler and Penguin all working it together. Now, that's interesting, too, because there were some people we didn't see. So it's like kind of makes you go, OK, so certain people might not be around anymore, like the sirens, for example. I mean, Barbara's kind of dead set on killing uh, Penguin now because of what he did killing Tabitha like that. I don't know if there's going to be any circling back around, like I said, to breaking her back, like whatever it is that Strange did. Once again, like that depends on him because he was definitely in town when that went down, especially considering the fact is that Riddler's still around and stuff like that. Because later on, when we, like when we jump that skip into the future, it seemed like he was more stable. Whatever his situation is, it seems like it does get fixed. It's a situation where enemies have to become allies to face whatever that is. Is that the government attacking them, or is that something else? Or is that kind of like connected to that little kid that came and was kind of like about to pass out and stuff? Like, what else is going on in Gotham? Is that something connected to Jeremiah, or is it, like I said, a whole other beast all on its own? It's kind of interesting, because I feel like, obviously, we've done a long time of setting up our villains. They've already kind of been established, but I think this is going to be the mark where everyone fully embraces and becomes, because I talked about this, if you didn't know, like, this season's kind of based on year one of the Batman uh, I think even like this episode, I could be wrong, but I think the episode title for this is Year Zero. So I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But um, I think this is where everyone finally becomes who they're supposed to be. Because I think even, I could be wrong, because what I was looking at was like a picture a little while back that was saying like the thumbnail, I mean, the, um, the uh, subtitle for this season was like Legend of the Dark Knight, which is interesting. Because I was curious like what they were going to name this season. I'm also curious like, will they introduce any new villains? Especially because like, They've introduced so many over the course of the series, you know, some still alive, obviously some dead, but I'm curious, like, are they going to squeeze in some new ones at the very end of it all, you know? I mean, to be fair, once again, like, Batman has a huge rogues gallery. Some that, you know, I've been familiar with a lot of my life, others I've slowly learned bits and bits about as I've grown up, and others I'm still just learning about, you know? There's also the fact is that they dabble with it a little bit this episode the whole like because of like low uh supply of food and stuff like that i mean it got even less because of scarecrow and his people stealing uh it makes you wonder in any shape or form is that well because now i'm thinking about it in retrospect let, let me quickly kind of well let me finish up my thoughts first the fact of the matter is like there's that whole aspect of once again like you know when people are starved and stuff like that people get paranoid people get a little antsy and stuff like that like people Something inside of people switches over. We see that a little bit. It didn't go to any extremes. It just kind of got into like a, oh, we know that you cops are feeding yourselves more food than you're giving the rest of us. So that, like, obviously that got quelled a bit. They've got more food now, but it's at like, a, you know, it's still only going to last like six weeks. So, but what I was about to say was, well, the fact that it didn't matter is we know that. It seemed like I would assume those are kids. Those look like teenagers or whatever. I mean, Crane himself isn't that old. So I'm assuming that he kind of gather other wayward kids, you know, to kind of fight his battle. 
what I was wondering at first, I was like, do you think in any shape or form those could be the kids that, you know, that Jerome inspired years ago, you know, well, not years ago, but within the context of the show, like seasons ago, uh, when, you know, he originally died and everything, and it was kind of implying like, oh, like he awoken something in a lot of kids around do you think that's connected to that? I'd assume that'd be something like, that'd be kind of like two different armies, like Scarecrow's own group and Joker's own group. Not unless that's something Jeremiah's doing right now. Like, do you think he, like those kids that were influenced by Jerome all, the, all that time ago are now flocking under Jeremiah? I mean, does he have an army of his own? Like, what is he planning? What is he concocting in all this time? Because the thing is, what's also interesting though, is like, he is a smart dude. And I think that's going to make him dead. Because I don't actually know. The Joker, I feel like, plans stuff in advance. The Joker can be very... I don't know if you'd call him intelligent or not. I'm sure there's comic books where he's really shown off his intelligence. But I feel like Jeremiah, we've seen that he is a very intelligent dude. Jerome was crafty, I'd make that argument, and psychopathic. But I think crafty, psychopathic, and intelligent is kind of where Jer Jeremiah stands. So... Like I said, who knows what he's been concocting under, like, all these, like, you know, past three months. What he has planned for Gotham. Especially because he made such a point to be like, yeah, like, he still believes in what, uh, Rachel Gould said about, like, you know, Bruce's destiny and, con you know, go because I think he's still turning Gotham in, preparing to turn Gotham into the fun house for him and Bruce, you know, like we, we got this great destiny ahead of us. It's always going to be you and me, you know, type of thing. So I'm very interested to really kind of get into that because it seems like obviously Joker is like the number one arch nemesis to Batman. So it's kind of neat that it's not like you directly see him. I'm very interested to see that lead up and what that ultimately ends up turning into. Well, I'm sitting here thinking about this now just because it's rolling around in my head. Now that I'm thinking which, I'm like, that, I kept, I was so certain it was Poison Ivy, but I guess it could be Lee. Like, once again, like I said, like, I figured her whole situation was connected to Ed, but, I mean, they could just have gone their separate ways and stuff like that. But, I uh, I feel like that'd just be weird considering, like, how things played out for them or things were, you know, that whole situation. But it's like, she is a doctor and everything, so whatever strange did to her could have you know i don't know like like ed's experiencing the stuff that he's experiencing maybe lee is doing the same thing and she's i don't know because like her whole thing is like helping people and stuff like that so maybe being a witch is what would be necessary i'm still i'm still pushing towards ivy but you know just sitting here kind of maybe go well not unless that's potentially what they're doing with lee like we'll just kind of have to wait and see on that though like I've said before, I am very excited to see how this final season plays out. Like I said, I am a little bummed that it is on the shorter side of things, but I'm still interested to see how this ends up rolling out and finishing up. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.